Well guys, the time has finally come. I've had to stop today and film this pantry update and I've been eating way too much out of it. I'm like, if I don't show you guys soon, it's I'm gonna have a lot missing. Um, but I want to take a different approach with the, this year's end of season pantry conversation. Normally I share with you what's all on the shelves behind me and what I'm most excited about and maybe if I did anything differently. And I'll highlight some of those things, but I wanna to talk to you guys about that whole conversation that's in our community right now. And our community crosses lots of genres, right? It's homesteaders, preppers, um, off-gridders, and uh, we kind of all are just this like little hodgepodge of people truly just seeking some some ownership and some independence of a lot of things in their lives. And, um, you know, we typically fall in that homesteader category. And I was asking myself and Todd and I were talking about it, like, would you call us preppers? And I think I wanna to talk to you guys about that today. Um, yeah, so let's dive into that conversation. So we answered that question with, I don't know. I mean, we definitely do things to, um, you know, have stock in hand. We never, um, I shouldn't say we never, because that's not true. I, we're, we are not acting in, um, in panic, I guess, in often times. Um, I'm not storing up like necessarily like 25, 30 year supply of things in case of like an apocalypse. Um, I, we don't have the doomsday prepper go hide underground thing, um, but we are prepared. So it's a really thin line in that uh, we don't do it out of fear of the end of the world or anything like that, but we do know because of our lifestyle and the things that we choose to invest in um, with respect to food security and backup preparations and things like that, that if something was to happen, um, you know, there was a major blackout again, um, say the banks went down for a while, uh, with cyber attacks, you know, things that we hear about, um, shortage on supply chain with canned goods and all that kind of stuff, we'd be okay. And that that's a really good feeling. And um, I think that it we started out in this journey for the love of it. Now, what do I mean by the love of it? I mean, number one, I was... Wait, um, what they say, woke, <laughs> right? Not many years ago about the um, food industry and what the commercial food industry is doing and how it's, um, you know, a lot of what the FDA and the American Heart Association and the USDA and take that into pharmaceuticals, you know, there's a lot to be learned and understood and said there. Um, I won't get into all that because I believe you should do your own research. But I really wanted to have some ownership of what was going in my body for my health and well-being. So I taught myself to garden and I taught myself to can and put up enough food. Um, I'm sorry that I came to this realization much later in my life. And it makes me so excited to see so many young moms and, and dads out there and young kids getting involved. And I wish I could have done that for my children. Um, but I'm thankful now that I'm able to share with my adult children from our harvest. And uh, that is a question I get asked a lot. You know, everyone knows it's just Todd and I here, and this is a lot of food. And it is a lot of food. This is easily a two year supply for us of food, both meat and in our freezers and food on the pantry shelves. But um, we do share with our kids and our family a lot. My daughter-in-law was just here yesterday, for example, and she took an entire case of cowboy candy with her. 
it was supposed to be a Christmas gift, but Todd spoiled the surprise. And I was like, oh, that's okay. Take it now. Anyway, I think that it was just um, a topic of conversation that we were having here in our household, seeing everyone <clears throat> respond, um, maybe with a little bit more urgency because of what's going on in, in the world today and the economy. Um, and I just wanted to encourage you that you don't necessarily have to go that entire prepper route, right? You just need to be prepared. And what does that mean to your family? And, and this is what it means to our family. We have food on the shelves. We're not dependent from the grocery store for much of anything. Um, we could get by, I should say that, without it. We'd be completely gluten-free and sugar-free, other than we do have our honey. Um, but, you know, we could get by. There wouldn't be any cheese, and that would be sad, but that's okay. Um, but we, um, we could stay here for a really, really long time and live just okay, um, better than okay. We would thrive. And that's because we put in the hard work. We put in tons of labor, tons of hours into learning um, both how to grow our food and how to preserve our food, how to harvest it with respect to our chickens and our turkeys, um, raising our own pork, and then farm sharing with a local farmer on um, beef now. So let me get into some of the exciting stuff. I know that's what you're here for. You want to know, Rachel, show us what's new in your pantry. What are you really excited about? And that's what I'm going to get into today and share with you some of the new, some of the same staples and some of the exciting changes that we've made. I'm just looking at what I want to show you guys um, that I'm really excited about that's new um, peach butter. Super excited about that. Used quite a lot, given a lot away. One of the funnest times I've had in my pantry this year was my sister stopped by with a bunch of her girlfriends. They live down in Toledo, Ohio. And uh, they follow us on Facebook and YouTube. And I said, well, I can't have you guys over and not show you the pantry. And I can't bring people to my pantry without sending them with loads away. And so each of the girls got, you know, like one of those ball boxes that your jars come in loaded with goodies. One of them lived down in Georgia. She, so I sent her home with some of my greens. I said, if they pass the Georgia test, I know I'm good. So <clears throat> that was a really fun experience. But what I'm probably most excited about is was I chose... Last year was the first time I did pizza sauce and I did them in the, you know, the half, um, maybe jelly jars and it was too small. So we did pizza sauce in our large jars and I've got a ton of pizza sauce. This is all pizza sauce. So I um, had just a whopper of a tomato year. So you guys are going to see tons of tomato products that will last us a long time. We did so many rounds of cowboy candy, guys. I would be surprised if I have to make it next year. So I've got four rows full of cowboy candy here, and there's three full boxes below at my feet. Cowboy candy. Last year was the huge year of cucumbers, and I did not have to do any pickles this year. I still have three full rows of pickles. Oh, a whole nother row here, too. I started soups earlier than I ever have this year. Um, normally soups is a winter canning project for me, but we got our stuffed bell pepper soup and it's de absolutely delicious. We're loving it. Salsa is the same. That's no different. The greens, I'm already eaten well into one row. So I've got four rows of greens there. What is this one? Oh, the condensed tomato soup and I'm so sorry I posted this on Instagram because I was trying to teach myself and I do that often when I'm a little uncertain how it's going to turn out and I didn't share it on YouTube but next year we loved it and you know what I didn't do I didn't write down the recipe so I'm going to have to do some research try to remember what I did and see if we can't recreate this for you guys next year and for me because I'm going to need to add more back to stock. Um, we're thoroughly enjoying that. 
more pickle peppers than I've ever ever done before because this year was a great pickle pepper year. So I'm happy to have those on stock. Oh, so you guys know how many <laughs> jars of, what did I do new this year? The canned um, caramelized onions. So that is these. And I showed you guys how I did them in the, you know, reused store-bought jars. And we're through an entire row already. So I'm thankful that down here, I still have two whole crates. Oh, you guys can't see me, but down here, two whole crates of onions. So we can redo a bunch more of those as um, we get closer into winter because we are using that a lot. Now, something I'm not sure how fast I'm going to go through and I did way more than I probably needed was the peach salsa. That was a recommendation from a lot of you guys with my peach harvest. And I do say I love it. It's great. But it's not um, something that we're going to use that that often. So I'm going to have to try to figure out how I can work that into um, a more routine basis because I have two full rows of peach salsa. Um, the zucchini applesauce was new this year. I'll be honest, I haven't used it yet, but <clears throat> I do look forward to sharing a recipe with you guys on using the zucchini, um, what did I say salsa? No, zucchini mac applesauce, that's what it was. So um, I look forward to that. That was totally new. Also very, somewhat new for us was all of our barbecue sauce. So um, something that I think will make life beautiful and why I said I think we'll thrive in the event of something occurring and you can't get out of your home or you can't buy supplies is we have like the peach salsa. We have the barbecue sauces. I have my spicy um, pepper mustard butter. I have lots of uh, tons of relishes, the pickled peppers, Things to make things yummy and fun and exciting when you eat it. And I think having lots of variations like my cowboy candy, all the things that make you happy when you're eating versus just a meat and potato or a meat and a veggie, um, rice and beans. We can spice it up a bit by being creative in our canning. Um, oh, two new things that were fun. I canned corn. You would think that that was quite simple, but we're just not big corn eaters, but we love it. I canned corn for the very first time, and from the corn cobs, we made corn syrup, and this is delicious. It's a great replacement for maple syrup. If you guys missed that video, I'll link to it. That was a lot, a lot of fun. Um, and then, for the first time ever, I canned my own pickled beets. I chose to do no spice this year, just a simple vinegar, water, sugar recipe. See how we like that. And lots of restocking of the pickled red cabbage slaw, which we absolutely love. I didn't do more of my standard coleslaw mix um, because I still have a full row of coleslaw in pints and a full row in quarts. So I just went with the red cabbage. So that's probably the most new fun things in this section. But we've got everything from our home harvested and processed maple syrup, applesauce, our pumpkin butter that we did. What else? Salsa verde. That's still from I don't even have a date on it. I think that's 2020. A lot of get do get quite asked a lot of questions from new canners. How long do I let this stuff go? And I try to get through it in at least three years. Um, I have things. I don't think I have anything older than 2019 still on the shelf. But one of the ways that I work my pantry is right to left. So. The newest jars will be on the left and I work from right to left when I'm taking a jar. So everybody has their own system. But I did start last year putting the dates on my jars for things that 
I remembered to anyway. This year I was really good about it. Okay, like I mentioned, we have two crates of onions. What is in here? Oh, those are all my onions, uh, our homegrown potatoes in there. And then I think you guys saw at the beginning of the video, I was bringing down jars and putting jars away. And I am still stocking up as we find um, more mason jars because with respect to are you prepared or are you prepping, um, it is something that we have experienced, right? The jar shortage. So there were points in times during my canning season this year, I was flat out. I was beautifully gifted jars from some of my viewers and that was such a blessing to receive. And I thank you guys so much. I definitely don't feel like you need to do that though. Um, I appreciate it, but <clears throat> we're trying our best to maintain stock now that the jars are coming back in store. And now that we have the freeze dryer, I'm even looking at things that if we come into a jar shortage again, I can empty out jars from older years, freeze dry that food and have jars to reuse. So that's probably gonna be my approach going forward is just rotating old stock out, freeze drying it, and then getting my jars back for fresh stock. So several reasons why I had to get down here and film this for you guys. It's, this is our seed garlic that we saved from our garlic harvest. I needed to come down here and grab this. And this crate right here holds all the fresh eating garlic. So just some beautiful garlic heads that I'll be planting, hopefully today or tomorrow. Later than ever before, but normally I try to get it in between middle and end of October. Um, it was just a really, really warm fall for us. And my 10 day forecast, I'm in the 40s to 60s range. So still a fairly warm fall. Now over here, this is kind of just bulk things that I keep in store. Um, what is this? Celery seed. Uh, red pepper flakes that we harvested and processed ourselves, pickling spice, sesame seeds, nuts, chocolate chips, bay leaves, all kinds of fun things, teas, um, allspice, cloves, turmeric, just all the things that you need to kind of keep on hand and store for mostly canning purposes. Now, <laughs> the tomato row. The tomato row goes all the way to here with respect to our tomato products. Mostly spaghetti sauce. Mostly. Let's get all the way. So I've got start here with my Creole style tomatoes. So from here forward is all spaghetti sauce. This is our Creole tomatoes. Um, and then from here down, it's like chili blend Mexican tomatoes. Some broth. The dilly beans that Lord knows I will never eat and I need to eventually empty these out. And more broth, chili beans, all of our green beans, carrots. This is this year's carrots. So here's where I'm talking about working right to left. Pumpkin, sweet potatoes. Our potatoes are back in store. So thankful for that because you guys, I shared with you last year, I canned um, potatoes for the first time and they were my absolute, one of our absolute go-tos down in our pantry. So we restocked our potatoes and if this runs shy or before my new, newly harvested potatoes were to um, spoil, I would can more. This was a really fun one this year. We've already used a few jars. Um, it was the green tomato curry sauce, and this is so, so good. So um, that will probably be a staple with our green tomato processing. That and our salsa verde will probably be my primary two choices. Now I've done the mock jams. I've done a lot of things with green tomatoes, but the pickled sliced green tomatoes for frying up some green tomatoes in the winter. But nah, I'll stick with the curry and the salsa verde. Lots more beets. So these are all of our beets that we canned this year. And then nothing really new down here. Maybe some more pumpkin looks like got put down on this shelf, but these are all soups from last winter. Some, um, I did the, oh, that was new this year the cherry pie filling. So this is the cherry pie filling from our cherry harvest this year. So 
lots of good yumminess on store. We have still honey from two honey harvests to go. And that is, let me grab, oh, excuse me. <laughs> that is this jar right here. So we have two of these still from our 20, 20 harvest. You guys saw the 2021 harvest up in the big honey pot upstairs. If you followed that. And we still have a super in the garage that we harvested that we need to bring in and process. So we're gonna have plenty of our own sugars, um, sweeteners to have on stock. And then I still have a five gallon tub of my final carrot harvest in the garage fridge that I need to process. I just haven't decided how I want to process it because I still, I have plenty of carrots canned. So I'm thinking about doing a couple things like grated carrots and then freeze drying them for quick grab and go additions to meals or carrot cake, things like that. And then probably doing some carrot powder. But I am loving my carrot soup too. So I might can some more carrot soup. So we'll see. So lots of good things. I think a couple other things to share with you that I'm doing. This is the very last tray. So when was our last green tomato harvest? It had to have been like three or four weeks ago. Three weeks ago, maybe. And got a Cherokee purple here ripening. So I just brought the green tomatoes down in the pantry in boxes and like as they ripen I'm throwing them in gallon freezer bags. So I think I have like three or four that come winter. If I have a winter soup canning project I can pull those out and use those. But that was a fun way to do it and it's you can see all my color variation from my tomatoes, but this is the last box that's processing. The last thing I didn't mention is my sweet potatoes curing. It's been, was it just last weekend we did that? So they need about, I've been down here just to let you know. So I get lots of questions about curing sweet potatoes because they do require a certain level temperature wise and humidity wise in proper curing conditions. Up here in the northern climate, so you're just never going to get that. So let me grab my thermometer. I keep a thermometer in my pantry, more so for you guys than for me because I always get asked. It's 61 degrees down here right now and 52% humidity. So that is not what you need <laughs> for carrying sweet potatoes. It's not optimal for storing potatoes. It's not optimal for storing onions. It's not optimal for a lot of things. But guys, that's what, what our situation is and we make the best with what we have. So I'm blessed that it at least, at least is cooler temperatures. During the cold, cold, cold of winter, it'll drop down to the low 50s in here. Um, but the humidity really never changes much. So... Like I said, I've been just turning the potatoes to let them dry really, really well. In about a week, I'll store them in a crate similar to those down there. So that is the wrap up of the 2021 garden season. Big push on food preservation. Um, you know, we have the freezers. I've got the deep chest over here that's fruits and vegetables, chickens and lard for the most part in that one. And then you guys behind you are my two stand-up freezers with all of our pork and chicken and turkey and some fish that we caught and beef. So that's all in there. So I look forward to now sharing with you, one of my favorite things to share on YouTube is how do I use all this? How do I make meals? And that was one of my primary drivers <laughs> to get down here and film a video because I'm, again, pulling things out of the pantry to go make uh, lunch for us today. So let me grab that and then I'll catch you on the next video. Oh. So we've got our black beans, chili beans, Mexican tomatoes, pumpkin, can you guess what we're making? 
we're gonna head upstairs and we're gonna make some of our pumpkin black bean chili. So I'll see you guys on the next video where I share that with you. Thanks for coming along. And if you're only doing it a little bit by little bit, that's all it takes. I'll see you guys soon.